everyone, Sam here. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about nesting dies and I'm going to show you some fun cards. Now, I also want to stress that you don't need dies to make the cards. You can use any shapes you want, any size you want. It's just, just for inspiration. But if you are a card maker with a die machine, I'm pretty sure you're going to have nesting dies. They're probably, if you're just getting into die cutting, nesting dies are, I would say, one of the first kind of dies that you're going to start to purchase. Get your circles, your squares, your rectangles. Those, those basic shapes are really, really handy. I work for Craft Stash, but I also and specifically work with the Creative Craft product brand. So you'll see me, I regularly, you know, promote it. Try to do it on a Tuesday and Thursday, but that's kind of changing a little bit. But anyway, um, I've got obviously lots and lots of nesting dies and they have got some new ones, which are slightly smaller. So they're more for your, your smaller cards. And I'll go through, well, I'll show you the ones that I'm gonna use, but they're the newer ones. I'll get them mixed up. So again, if you're just coming across this video, if you're new to card making, check out the Creative Craft Products or CCP as we call it, and you'll see so many wonderful nesting dies. These are my favourite circles. I think they may be out of stock at the moment. They might be back in, I'm not sure, because it was a while since I checked. But the, the reason I like these is they're just simple circles, but they're very tight together, so you get a very thin border. They're really, really nice. Along with all of these, you can see they're much tighter. I've got some on magnetic sheets. I need to give these a good sort out, to be honest, for those ones there. So again, they could be a card blank as well. You could make just that huge card and then all your mats and layers, all these different um, shapes here. But they're simple designs as well. Then you've got your scallops. Scallops are another, I would say, a good basic because they're just such a pretty shape. And then there's just loads of other ones. Again, I've shared all of these at some point on the channel. I will make a playlist I'll do you like a nesting die playlist. I'm not sure. I might already have that, actually. But um, if it is something that, you know, like I said, you're new um, to and you just want some inspiration, these are great as well. The Rick Rack. I did a great spinner card with the circle ones. Inverted scallops. They're another favourite of mine. And a lot of them will coordinate. So your circle in this set will coordinate with the simple circles. Or there's a filigree one, which I like to use together a lot. These designs here with that pretty frame. So that's the nice thing as well. So if you, you know, if you've got a lot of these, you'll find that you can mix them together, which is always good. But I've got three card designs. Um, they're kind of a take on the springy pop-up card that I've made, and that's no dies at all needed for that one. So again, like I said, check that out. I'll have it linked. Um, I'm going to focus on the new ones, which are here because they're just all a little bit smaller. But you've got your simple shapes there, so there's no like stitch detail or anything on those. And then these ones here, you have stitches and dots. But like I said, you can use anything. I just really just wanted to do another little shout out about the nesting dies that are available. These are like the hero pieces that you always need in your stash. So for the first card, I'm going to use the nested stitch and pierced hearts. But like I said, any shape you can use, any size as well. I'm going to make these. I think also they fit in a 5 by 7 envelope. You can even make your hearts yourself as well. Just fold a piece of paper in half and draw half of the heart and then cut it out, open it up and you've got your heart shape. There's lots of ways to be, you know, creative with this and see what things you've got around your house that you can draw around and things like that. OK, now ignore that I've got a middle score line because I was starting off with a different design and then I've changed my mind. But whatever shape it is, whatever size it is, find the middle. So for me, I'm just sitting this. So it lines up with that four inch marker there. And then I'm going to score either side of that. So I'm going to score down and then either side. So I'm not scoring in the middle. I'm not scoring in that four inch one, just either side. I want to create a quarter inch section in the middle of that shape. So if you've got a piece that's six inches, find your three inch marker and then score either side. All right, whatever size it is you've got. I'm doing that again on this piece. So I've just cut to the same size. And I'm just going to, again, just score either side. And then you want to fold and burnish and that little quarter inch section is how we're going to fix everything together. OK, so I'm going to use my construction glue and just run some glue right down the middle there. And then I'm just going to place this one on top, line them up perfectly. The idea is, is when it all folds down, you don't see the ones underneath. So just give that a minute to dry. I've then taken the next size down, again, find the centre, so I'm going to use the five inch one here and just score either side. I just want to do this with one and again, just fold. So you've got that quarter inch section, add your glue. And then you're going to sit that in the middle of this one. 
Okay, and just focus on your border. Happy with that. And then the next size down, same score either side of the centre. Now you could go down and do it again on the smaller one. I'm going to leave that one. I think I'm just going to have that one popping up on its own. And again, and stick that one down in the middle. So I'm going to just leave all that now to completely dry. Okay, so I keep changing my mind with this one. And that's the fun thing about these cards is I'm using just any shapes to make and build the card itself. You can do what you want, really, as long as it's going to stand if you want it to and balance and just play around with it. So what I'm going to do next is because that won't stand like, you know, on its own, you'd have to create a stand for it. But that's quite pretty on its own. What I want to do is start to kind of fan it out a little bit. So I've cut more of the the middle size there but again whatever size you want to do and I think I want to have it so that it's kind of like I want you to be able to see a bit of both the hearts so I want this side to sit so it runs with that point and that then that way it's going to stand up because I'm going to do this on the back as well and then maybe I could have that one up there see that looks nice and that's how it's going to look now the idea is is that this one is going to pop out and then i've got the tiniest little sentiment sending my love which i was going to have just so you can see where i'm kind of going with the sentiment but that it won't probably pop as much they'll just be a little bit flatter but that will pop up and then i've got other little ones to decorate that i was going to just stick around it as well there's so many ways to do this so i think it's best to just add a little glue onto this bit and just get that one in place first. And then just a little glue behind that one. Everybody's is gonna be a bit different. Again, keep an eye on the size as well. I did say I'd like these, I'd like these to fit in a five by seven envelope. <laughs> okay, we're nine inches. Let's just bring this in a little bit, I think you'll see the hearts more when it's open so i'm not too worried about that at the moment but okay eight is fine i'll do an eight by six envelope that's okay as long as it's within a size envelope that we can actually make or buy so i'm just getting the the kind of little points and the this the same as that side i'm happy with that and it all folds down nicely so that's how it will be in the envelope so next i'm going to start adding some of these springs because i want this to pop up on its own when it comes out of the envelope so I just cut myself everyone's going to need different amounts but they're two by half an inch and along that two inch side you want to score at half an inch one and one and a half concertina fold them so a mountain valley and a mountain fold so you've got like a little m shape and you're just going to add your glue to the top and the bottom for that one and then that one and keeping it like so when you fold it just just fold them don't squash it you want there to be that kind of little spring and then i'm going to pop this towards the back so it's kind of hidden in there and then just close it so it sticks to the other one again don't really push it down you don't want to flatten it but can you see now it's just got that natural little bounce to it and i'm going to pop one in between each layer so on this one and then i've cut them in the lighter color to go behind this one and then that mid color these are the pink tones from creative craft products to go into that one so it, i mean eventually i'll probably push it a little bit down but it will all just naturally sit like this So I just went to stick my pan in the middle, but I've changed the size of it. So if you want to have your sentiment then popping up in the middle, so you can see I've got that nice spring now to those. I've cut this piece here, which is four by half an inch. Yours may vary in terms of the width because I just need to make sure that mine can sit behind this little heart here. So if you've got something that's bigger, you could certainly make that wider. Along the long side, you want to score at half an inch, one, one and a half and then two and a half, three and three and a half. And you want to create a mountain, valley, mountain, and then a mountain, valley, mountain. 
So you'll see, you should have something like that. So you've got that spring again, but this time you've got this one inch section here and that's what will attach behind your little topper. So you can see mine hides behind there. Now this is gonna sit right in the middle of the heart. So ignore your two score lines, just focus on the middle now. So imagine there's a score line right through the middle or a line and you wanna sit that. So each of these little pieces here, when they're together like that, they should sit in the middle of you know your card. So just squash it all back down like so. And just kind of make sure that it's going to be hidden behind your topper, which I think that one will. And again, don't burnish the score lines, just fold it. You want to keep that nice spring there, okay? And then my glue to the top. So if that goes in a bit wonky, don't worry, because now your topper, you can make sure you get that lined up. And now we've got that, it looks like it's like a beating heart. <laughs> I think that's so cool. I love that. What a cool Valentine's card. And then I'm going to pop my decoration. Just got some extra little hearts here. These are from, if you watched, um, I can't remember which video it was now. But there's all these little ones. And sometimes it's quite handy to just have these tiny little stamps. So the stars, the flowers. I think I use, yeah, I've got the flower one for another one. But I used just the little scribbly heart there. I thought it was quite cute. We've got the little sprayer hearts as well. The leaves. I've just got them on my desk, so I've actually been going to them a few times. So I'm going to have that one. I might have it on a slight angle, almost like the arrow. And then I thought I could have maybe those three. That looks cute. Okay, so very pleased with that. I could add some little decorations. I might add some glaze onto the heart so they shine. I'll do that towards the end. So now I need to make it stand up and add my space on the back to write my message. So I'll cut another large heart. Again, whatever shape you're using, just cut it again. And I've scored the same and stick that on the back. I've got some more springs. So I'm going to add the springs behind. And then I'm going to just copy this design. Just line them up. But you're going to stick it all to this one. So it'll be behind this one here. So we're going to create the same design as a stand on the back. And then I've got this one, which is going to be my topper in the middle. And uh, I'll show you how to stick that one down in a minute. So you can see now I've added the springs and then just that same design on the back there. So we've got this kind of, you've got four points now, so it's got more of a, a base to stand, but it still needs to balance a bit. This is only because I'm using the hearts. If you're using something that's got more of a, a bigger flat base, then that will be enough to hold it. Because if you imagine, you know, it came out to here, it would stand now. And then you could just add, you know, this spring and a topper there. Um, put a white piece and that's your place for your message. But I'm going to add this one on another spring so it pulls it out. I think I'm going to call this tutorial build a card because you are just building your own card. Everybody's is going to be different. I just think it's really fun playing around, I'm just changing it as I go. So this one is the same size, four inches as this, this one here, but instead I've cut it so it's one and a half wide. But the same score lines as that little spring on the front. And again, add my glue. I've cut the original heart, the large one because you want it to be the same. You want it to hit the bottom there. So again, just fold that Ooh, all down. Like so. Just sit that across the middle. And then add the glue on there. And then this one is going to be where I'll write my message and just line that up with the original one. But now it pops out. And once all of these come out, see it stands up. Perfectly. There you go. A really springy, bouncy builder card made purely from nesting dies. <laughs> and I think it's come out really well. Let me just add the glaze because then that can start to dry as I'm doing the other the other cards. So just a little shine on those three hearts. I've got some very small little heart embellishments as well. They could look quite nice. I think they're silver. So you might see them added later, just a thin layer because I don't want that to run because it is slightly angled. So I just have to keep an eye on that. 
I might just keep that down like that for a minute. So that's all dry now. I'll show you it again at the end. So for the next card, I had an idea to use acetate with rings and try and create the illusion of like floating rings. But I don't know if it's going to all come together. Um, I'm working with curves again, so I'll probably have to do something similar with the hearts to make it stand. Or maybe I'll add... No, we'll, we'll get there. Anyway, right. <laughs> I'm making this as I go, so there will be changes. So I've used any ovals. You don't need the ones I'm using. Um, but I'll just grab that set. So it's just simple ovals. They're just plain. You get 11 in this particular set. And I've cut just the the largest one just in plain card because it does need to have something behind it to allow it to pop and then i've cut it again in acetate so i've got a large one now. i've just got it on the tissue because i've just been cleaning it just with some rubbing alcohol although i might give that a wipe again but i've cut it again so that's just for the back okay whatever shape you're doing cut it again then in your acetate and then i've cut it again in white but with the next size down die to then create this ring. And I've added some red tape on it and I want to stick that to the acetate one. And I'm going to add little springs behind it because on the very front or in the very centre on the front, I'm going to have this topper. And the idea is, is that all the springs on each of the layers, I'm going to try and hide behind this topper. If you look to the side, you would see it. But as you look on, all you should see is just floating rings from a distance kind of thing. And then, yeah, we'll see, see how this one goes. It may change along the way. So I'm going to stick that one onto there. I've then cut the next size down again in the ovals and then the next size down again with the white to create the ring. That's going to then obviously go on top of that one. And then I've got the next size down again in the acetate and then again in the white with the next size down again to create the ring. So hopefully that all makes sense, but you could do as many as you want, but you can see that. And then once I've got that sentiment in the middle and then I've just used the flowers, like I said, from that small, um, small set. They're really cute. Um, that one there, the floral circle ones, because these all go with the rotating or they would launch with the rotating platform. So you can create some fun cards that way. I've got little springs there, but I've just cut um, a load of different flowers there in my favorite trio of colors and they're going to kind of go around the sentiment there so they could disguise a few of the um the springs if you see them as well so i'm going to stick all those rings onto the acetate first So I've made the same springs that I've made to, I think they're drying now, to attach the centre toppers. So not the little springs in between, but the centre ones. So this is four by, I've done these at four by one. And yeah, four by one. And again, I've scored at half an inch, one, one and a half, and then two and a half, three and three and a half. And you can do a mountain, valley, mountain, and then mountain, valley, mountain. So again, you've got that kind of spring and I need this to be in the middle of each one. So this is going to be like a tiered spring card. I've done similar before with rectangles, a completely different style. Um, again, if I remember all these, I'll link them up there. So I'm going to use um, red tape, double sided tape will work as well. You're not going to see it on the very back because there will eventually be this panel. I'm going to stick each of these layers down now with one of these springs behind. Okay, so I've stuck everything down and I'm super pleased with this. It looks so effective. Look at that. Now, obviously, it's going to be up like this. You can see the springs there, but I think they visually, I think they look good. They're nice and neat. But you imagine you're going to be looking at it, you know, more face on. So like that. But isn't that cool? So now I'm going to start adding the flowers towards like the bottom left and the top right there. Again, if they kind of start going off to one side, I wouldn't worry too much because it is going to be displayed like this. And then it, you can see it completely like balances itself back out again. I have to play around with them a little bit obviously if you don't want your springs as springy or as dimensional as mine 
rather than doing every half inch, do every quarter of an inch so you have much smaller springs. You could just add foam pads as well in between each layer. So, but I, I like, you know, if again, if you've been following me, you know I like to do things a little bit different. So I'm going to build up my flowers and then I'm going to add the card to the back to allow it to stand up. Okay, so I've added my decoration and then to make the card, what I've decided to do is I've cut the largest oval, again, whatever shape you're using, in a pink because I want to stick this onto, or it's going to be back, you know, have that as the background. I think it pops a bit more than the white and then the white will be behind and that will be where I write my message. So we need to turn this into a little card. So with the white one, Whatever shape it is, just with an oval, you need to try and get it straight. But you want to give yourself a half inch tab. So I'm going to score um, about there. Maybe it's that's a little bit more. But as long as you've got a tab like that, just fold it over. If you're working with a curved shape, you'll want to just cut a little bit off the back just to land the card and stop it rocking. So I'm going to line up this score line so I know it's nice and straight. You only need to take a little bit off, so like so. So I've just taken less than quarter of an inch. So that now will allow the card to stand straight. Then take your glue and just fold and burnish that little tab that you've made. Add your glue and then sit your other piece over the top. Make sure everything lines up nicely. And make sure that's completely dry before you then fold it. Whilst that is drying, I'm going to now add some tape all around that frame because I don't want you to see it when I stick it onto this piece. So I've just taking the backing off there, I'm just going to sit this one again, just give that a little wipe. Make sure there's no loose bits or anything in there. You could turn that into a shaker actually, that back piece. <laughs> Pop a little bit of foam around there and add some beads and that would look uh, pretty cool. So now just very carefully fold that back part. Okay, so that's how it will all be in the envelope. And then it just kind of pops up, wobbles about, which I think looks cool. You've then got your space inside there to write your message. And you can see now how it displays. And that kind of just sits there and that's how it is. Yeah, when you look at it, I think that's really fun. I like that a lot. And you could also have it down this way and build up the card and have something a little a little bit different that way. But that's going to work well with, with any shape. I think with stars, that will look really cool. I love that. I love the wobble. And then for the third card, I'm using the stars. So again, any stars, if you've got some, then it will work. But I have used this one here, the nested stitched and pierced stars set. And with this one, I just want to create... A simple card blank just with these two and then I was just going to build up all the stars and I've got the tiny ones again from these little sets and um, that one there so I just use the ones where you can color them in but you've got the blank ones there I like this one with like the shooting star I think that's quite sweet got one in the green one in the white the white one again I just want to create a little tab on the top so I'm just going to turn it on its side this isn't a symmetrical star it's more like a wider one, so it's wide here and then smaller. But I just want to score a little bit there, just like I did with the oval one. And then I can add my glue to that part. Like so. And then sit that one over the top. Once that's dry, just fold it back again. But now you've got your little card blank. Really easy to do. And then... I've just done all the different mats and layers. So I think I'm just going to add foam between those layers. And then, is I going to have that one in the middle? I think so. Yeah, and then I've got the happy birthday. So this is just going to be really dimensional with foam pads, I think. I do like to add them, something like that. And then I want to start making the card bigger. So I think I need a darker coral in that size. 
but I want to start to put them like behind the star and start to like just spread the stars out again maybe that one could be stuck like there and then I could have another one attached and then these little colored ones here so just it'd just be a ton of stars Okay, so there is the finished card. This would work as a DL as well. You have, you know, flip it on its side like this and then have them even longer. But as long as you've got a good kind of straight, you know, the points kind of hit the bottom there so it can support it when it stands. I like that idea. I think that looks really cool. If you don't want to have them all just floating, you could have this on an acetate card and then stick them all down onto the acetate. But I like that. I think they make nice little um, like party invitations. Look good for Christmas as well. And you can see all those little glittery stars that I've added they're just from my stash and then I've added little silver hearts onto this one just to add a bit more shine you can see that glaze is starting to dry now as well and then I added some glaze just into the center of the two flowers it's very cloudy at the moment but once that dries clear then you see the detail again so there's my three fun little builder cards you know everyone is going to be different use any shapes you've got you might have punches that you could use just have some fun with it this is what crafting is all about it's just kind of sitting down and making something fun out of paper <laughs> and that's why i love it so much because you never know what you're going to get so whether you've got dies or not find things you've got around the house um or just use lots of different squares squares are good as well because you can just turn them on their side and then you've got a diamond shape so uh yeah like I said, have a play around. So thank you as always for watching today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and that way you won't miss out on future videos. I'll have the playlist coming up here, which will be just like fun things to do with nesting dies, something like that. I'll link to the homepage of the nesting dies over on Craft Stash. And you can just see all the different ones that they've got there if it's something you wanna, you know, build a little bit in your stash. Um, but like I said, use what you've got. And uh, yeah, just hopefully this has given you some inspiration. So thank you as always for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.